How you doing? I'm CK with Under Pressure Performance and today we're going to be going over how to install one of our fuel systems on the 2010 to 2014 Camaro. Now this is a supplementary fuel system so it's going to go in along with your factory fuel system and more than double your fuel supply. Um, it's going to be activated by a boost pressure switch, a hob switch, so it's only active when you're under boost and when you actually need it. Um, so let's go ahead and get started on it. Alright, first thing we're going to start off with is we're going to be over here on the driver's side. We're going to go ahead and tap a hole in the tank. Um, now we're going to be drilling it out and tapping it for a 3 8 NPT uh, pipe tap. Now NPT pipe taps are tapered, so the more you push the tap into it, or the more you screw the tap in, the wider it's going to enlarge the hole. So you don't want to just take the tap and just run it in there all at one time. You want to kind of go in slow, test fit it. Once you get this to start threading on, that's it, you're done. Don't roll it out till it, it you know, readily screws in or, or slides all the way in and out. Um, if you do screw up the tap threads on it, you can jump it up to the next size, which is going to be a half inch MPT. That's why we're starting with the 3 8 Gives you, you know, one step as a backup on it. Then what we're going to do, uh, now we're going to put that hole right here uh, on the slanted part. It's going to be towards the rearmost part of the car and on the very bottom side of it. That way, as you're taking off and you're accelerating, which is when you're most likely going to need the fuel system, all your fuel is going to slosh to the back and it'll be able to pick it up just like a uh, regular fuel cell. Um, now when we screw this in, we're also going to use the Teflon washer. So we'll go ahead and set that on just like that. And then what we like to do is we like to use a little bit of uh, super glue. Um, just regular standard old super glue as a sealant. Put a little bit on the threads and put a little bit on the washer here. And then we're going to screw that in until it's all the way tight. So normally in NPT fitting you'd only screw it in partial way. Partial way. We're going to actually screw it in all the way. It's going to do two things. One, it's going to set the uh, seal against the Teflon washer here too. The more we screw it in, the tighter it's going to squeeze on the threads here as it goes in. So we'll go ahead and get that screwed in like that. Um, next thing we're going to do is we're going to connect our dash 10 line, which is going to come down and we're going to do the 135 on there. And then we're going to route the line right around the fuel tank here and then up in this little, you can see there's a little cutaway here. And we're going to go right up alongside here to the frame rail. As we're coming up, we're going to be securing the line along the way with uh, some of these cushion hose clamps here. We'll just basically screw it into the frame or into the bottom of the body here. That's going to tuck this line up nice and tight so we don't catch it on anything as we're driving down the road. Now your dash 10 line is going to come up. The straight fitting is going to go towards the front of it. Um, then we're going to go into the fuel filter. Now this one's a little bit smaller than the one you guys will be using. It's, yours is a little bit bigger uh, so it can actually filter a little bit more uh, fuel at the same time. Next is going to be this T-fitting here. And the T-fitting is going to go right into the fuel pump. Now, as we screw from the uh, line here onto the fuel pump, that's a dash 10 line, so that just screws right on. When we go from the fuel pump to the T-fitting here, this is actually set up for an ORB fitting, so this is going to actually take a, an O-ring um, in between the connection here. So as you're screwing it in, this will be an AN fitting on the regulator here, or on the uh, fuel filter here itself. Go ahead and we'll slide the O-ring over that, and that's going to screw into the boss of the T-fitting here. The same thing with the other side as it goes into the pump. It'll have what looks like an AN type line coming off. It's actually an AN, but usually they're missing the, uh, the flare fitting on the top of it here. Um, that'll get an O-ring on it as well. And then we peel the heat shield back here so you can see what's going on. When we get done, we'll just push the heat shield back up. It's going to help protect the heat away from the pump and that here. Coming out of the fuel pump, we're going to be using the 6 ORB fitting, which is again uh, an AN fitting basically with an O-ring on it toward the, on the fuel pump side. And then on the after fuel pump side, um, where the line connects, that's just a regular line, so that doesn't require a, uh, an O-ring on that one. And that line's just going to screw into that. Now we're going to run both the lines. you got the, the return here and the fuel feed here. Both these lines, we're just going to run them right along the frame rail here on the back side of this heat shield. And we're going to kind of follow the exhaust up and just shoot it right up on the back side of here. We'll show you what it looks like on the top side once we get done. Um, then we're going to have our turn coming down from the top side. That's going to be this one here with the 90 degree, and that's just going to 90 degree T, or 90 degree right into our T fitting here. Now the T fitting, uh, the this blue fitting that's going into the T, uh, that's also going to be a dash six to to dash six or dash six to ORB. So the bottom side of that is going to need a uh, Teflon washer or a, a O ring on that as well to seal that up. Now for the electrical connection, you can see we've got the ground coming off the pump, and that basically just goes to you know we just tap that into a, a good solid ground there. And then we have the positive wire here. Positive wire is going to run along with our fuel lines. That's going to go right behind this heat shield up the top as well. So we'll show you that once we get up there. Now for the fuel pump mount, um, it's pretty straightforward. It's just a two bolt sleeve from right under here. And you just mount the T-bolt clamp 
and then tighten the T-bolt clamp up and that secures the fuel pump up under there just like that. And then there's two rubber pads that'll actually, that comes with the fuel pump mount and they'll go behind the mount as you're screwing it in. That'll isolate some of the vibration from the fuel pump from vibrating into the frame rail itself. You can see the two fuel lines coming up from the bottom side right here. Um, the straight one that's gonna plug right into the side of the regulator, that's our fuel feed. So we're, our feed is coming from the pump, gonna run right up here and into the side of the regulator. Now as it connects to the regulator, um, all the connection points, all three of them on the regulator are what's called ORB fittings. That's basically just the dash six with the uh, uh, O-ring on it. Um, so each one of these connections, as it screws into the regulator, will get the O-ring on it. Um, again, same thing over here on the opposite side of the check valve. This actually has an O-ring in it where it screws in to here. So we're gonna come into the regulator. We're gonna use our dash six to ORB adapter there. Coming out of the regulator on this side, we have a dash six to dash eight adapter in here because the uh, check valves here are actually a dash eight. So we're stepping it up to a dash eight. Um, and both connections on this are ORB, so both sides of this require an O-ring. Coming off of this side here is a dash eight to dash four. Again, an ORB fitting, so that one requires an O-ring. Once we step it down to the dash four, um, we're gonna use this dash four feed line with a 90 on this side, and yours will actually have a straight over here. We're gonna replace this one so we can come in at a straight shot here. And it's gonna come around and hit right up to your factory fuel line there. Now inside your factory fuel line, you have a Schrader valve, which is basically just like a tire valve, um, and you wanna take the Schrader valve out of it. The Schrader valve allows um, air to go in and out when it's being pressed, but since we have nothing to press it, we're gonna take it out completely. That's gonna make it be able to free flow right through there. Uh, coming out the bottom of the regulator is gonna be our return, and we're gonna have a dash six to dash six ORB on the bottom of that as well, and that's just gonna go right into our return line here with the 135 degree angle, and that's gonna put it, and we'll run these two, we'd like to see here, we zip tied them together so it's nice and clean and shoots right back down. Um, next up, we'll go ahead and work on the wiring for it. All right, now to hook up the wiring on it, there's quite a few different ways you can hook it up. So we're gonna give you the basic, simple way to wire it. Um, you guys can wire it kind of however you want, um, but the principle is gonna be basically the same. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get first uh, power to our relay. We're gonna get uh, our trigger wire is gonna be the 12 volt. Um, we usually just tap into an injector wire. The pink wire on the injector is the hot. So that way when it's keyed on, that one gets an ignition source. We're gonna run that to pin 85 on the relay here. Then from the other side, pin 86, that's gonna be our ground trigger. We're gonna run that over to our hob switch. Now the hob switch you'll see has got three different poles on it. They're labeled NO, NC, and C. NO is normally open, NC is normally closed, and C is your common. So we're gonna run it between the NO, uh, yeah, between the NO and the C. So between normally open and common. So off of pin 86 on the relay, we're gonna to go to NO. Coming off of NO, we're gonna take that to any ground source. So you can ground it to the block, you can ground it to the frame, wherever, just as long as it's a good ground. So then what's happening at that point is once this pressure switch is activated at five PSI, um, it will close the circuit between the ground and the common output. That's gonna send your ground signal to your relay. And as long as your ignition switch is on, it's gonna send your positive trigger here, the relay is gonna activate, which is gonna turn the fuel pump on. So the idea is your car has to both be on and be above whatever your preset boost is on this, which these should come set by around five PSI. Now it is also important to note these are adjustable, so if you notice that it's car starting to lean out before it actually kicks in, they need to kick it in a little bit sooner. The rubber plug on the back of here actually comes out, and down inside there, there's an Allen wrench, and you can adjust it. If you screw it in, that raises the pressure at which it comes on. If you screw it out to the left, that lowers the pressure. So most people end up lowering the pressure a little bit. Don't lower the pressure too much, or it'll be on all the time, no matter what. All right, so for the other, other connections on the relay between 87 and 30, um, 87 is going to go to our power source. So we're going to tap that right off of the, uh, the fuse box over there. Um, you can tap it to any ignition volt source. Um, you do want to make sure it's got some decent amperage behind it because I think that amp pull, or the, the pump pulls about 20 or 30 amps. Um, now if you are running to an unfused source for this one, make sure you put an inline fuse in with it so that way it's, it's your circuit's protected. So what we do is we tap right off the positive terminal on the uh, uh, the fuse box over there, we'll run a 30 amp inline fuse and then we'll go to pin 87. Pin 30 is gonna be our output that goes down uh, the positive wire that goes all the way back to the fuel pump. So again, we've got pink wire from our injector. We're gonna T-tap into that and that's gonna go to pin 85. Pin 86 is gonna go to our hob switch to NC from C on the hob switch to ground. Pin 87 is gonna come from our 12 volt positive power supply, that's a constant and decent amount of amperage, like I said, from the uh, 
uh, fuse box to an ignition or inline fuse, and then 30 is going to go back down to the actual fuel pump itself. Okay, the last thing we're going to need to do is set up the fuel pressure on this. Um, now, there's a couple different ways you can run this as a return style system if you're converting the whole thing over. However, for most of you guys, um, that's just doing an add-on system unless you remove the regulator that's in the rear in the, in the tank and everything. Um, you can't switch it over to a return style system. So for just the basic bolt-on setup, which is what we're showing you now, we're not going to actually be using this vacuum port. So don't connect a vacuum line to this. Um, that'll raise the boost pr or the, the fuel pressure on it when it's under boost, which your factory regulator that's back in the tank can't handle that, so it's going to override that anyway. Um, so what we want to do, uh, your stock fuel pressure on this is set to 58 PSI. We want to go ahead and set this regulator here to about 60 PSI. So we'll key the car into the on position but without starting it. And then we'll go ahead and uh, hotwire across our hob switch. So we're going to tr falsely trigger the system and make it come on prematurely here. So we're going to hotwire across that. That's going to activate the fuel system with the car being off. So now that that secondary fuel system pump is running, but our factory one is not. So that's going to go ahead and activate this, and then you'll see the fuel pressure shoot up. We're going to adjust the fuel pressure with the engine again, with the engine and everything off, um, and we're going to try and target 60 PSI on it. That way it's a couple PSI above what the factory is, but it's not tremendously above it. The higher you go on your fuel pressure on this above what the factory is, the more the factory regulator has to work to get rid of and, and, and shed that pressure off of it, um, which can, if you run it too high, you can actually damage the uh, factory fuel, pump, uh, fuel pressure regulator. So we're going to set this one to 60, um, and then when the, uh, you get five pounds of boost, it activates the system. Your secondary line will charge up with about 60 PSI, and that'll start feeding your system. When the system's off, the check valve here will close up, so it keeps your factory system completely separate and segregated from this fuel system. So as you're idling, cruising, driving around, this thing's going to run just like it was from the factory. You don't have, you know, tremendous amounts of fuel flowing up here. It's only flowing when you actually need it, which is when you're into boost. That about finishes it up here for this install. So thank you guys for watching. Um, if you guys have any questions or need any help with it, don't be afraid to uh, give us a call or drop us a line um, on our email, and we'll get you taken care of.